Bobby Fox, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. Oh, man. Great. So glad to see you. So glad to be hanging out with you. So, uh, Robbie, like I said, you have been on Around the Galaxy. It, dude, I can't believe it's been a couple of years. Like, time has flown. It was probably during the height of pandemic. But uh, for people who may not know you, give us a little bit about you. Yeah, I work for Barstool, as you mentioned. I do a podcast called My Mom's Basement, where we talk about a bunch of nerdy stuff. Star Wars is kind of my main focus. It's my biggest love out there. So talk about that Marvel stuff. I'm also Barstool's MMA UFC guy. So I cover a lot of fighting as well. Music, kind of kind of all around for Barstool. But yeah, I've been working there for seven years now. That's amazing. Before, I, I want to just ask a real quick question up front. And it may not be a real quick question. What is the <laughs> wrestling connection to Star Wars? Because I know you're MMA, but you're also a big wrestling yeah. guy, too, right? Huge wrestling. Um, so I, I I was into WWF back in the 80s, and yeah. then I kind of faded out of it. But my my feed is full of friends who love Star Wars and they love pro wrestling. What's that connection, dude? I don't know. That's a guy. I've never even thought about it. Maybe it's just how over the top it is, but you know, <laughs> we take it very seriously and treat it like Shakespeare, even though we know it's like a little <laughs> hokey, but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what that connection is. I think it has to be the, the flashy over the topness because especially like looking at nineties wrestling, I'm sure you remember it was yeah. all over the top, bright colors, you yeah. know, there were, there were characters that looked like they could have been in the cantina. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. With, Without a question. And I want to ask a follow up question to this. It falls into that same what is with this group of people and Star Wars fans, because we have a lot of connecting points there. Um, you play bass in a punk band. Mm -hmm. Pete and I are both bar band bassists of varying stripes. And we have had literally dozens of other guests on Around the Galaxy over the years. Nick Gambarian from Bayside, Adam Russell from Story of the Year, John Tegg, who's an actor. Um, Arta Ocal, the hockey guy from ESPN, is a bass player. Like we've had all these different people that are bass players. What do you think it is about Star Wars and bass players that connect on a level? I mean, you could say maybe, maybe John Williams got in all our brains early and made us, <laughs> you know, fans of music just subconsciously. Yeah. It, I think it tells me. I'm sure you've seen the. Everyone sends it to bass players that are Star Wars fans. The <laughs> Rebel bass picture where it's the money yeah, yes. talking bass. Disney yeah. needs to mass produce those because clearly there's a lot of us. Yeah, that would we'll buy. all buy one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny you say that about John Williams because, like, that was for those of us who are Generation X, the uh, the guys with the white beards. Um, like, our only access to Star Wars was listening to the soundtrack, mm -hmm. and I actually think like. Not only are we bass players, but I think there's a lot of like metal and punk influence. And I'm going to I'm going to point that back to Ben's Death and the TIE Fighter Attack. The that song was like the first metal song in my <laughs> brain ever. What it was like. It's like, yeah, that's like driving music, man. So I love that. <laughs> we could so definitely what, rework that into a breakdown yeah i mean if the three of us got together though it would be full on like spinal tap full bass <laughs> yes <laughs> just a bass off all the way around <laughs> absolutely yeah so and and you through barstool and through uh through your interviews and whatnot you've uh you've been uh you've spoken to a lot of really cool and interesting people and in fact one of my favorite ones is when you talk to Gav, speaking of music gavin rossdale from bush so cool. It's one of those bands that like, I don't understand, you know, they kind of faded away, but they're like still there and they're, but they had so much influence, but you asked him a great question that I want to ask you, uh, but, but kind of keep it in the nerdy sense. You asked him, um, you about having the opportunity to meet his heroes, uh, mm -hmm. and, and lots of them. And his, his Bowie answer was really cool, but you've had the opportunity to meet some of your heroes from, a either, whether it's, uh, in star Wars or other, other fandoms, which one which one lived up to all the hype for you the most or which ones if there's more than one yeah that's a great question there for me there's a lot of musicians that i almost place like on this like higher level almost where yeah. i've talked to wrestlers and i've been around wrestlers since i was in high school i was setting up rings i was really trying to like get my foot into the business mma mm -hmm. fighters i've been interviewing fighters for years now i'm very like used to it the occasional like conor mcgregor of course has a different aura than the rest of them that was definitely one of my favorites that was like a crazy 24-hour notice 
UFC hit me up and said, hey, we can get you, Connor, tomorrow if you can get to Las Vegas. We have no time, uh, like no idea what time we can get him for you, uh, but just show up in Las Vegas tomorrow and we can get you 10 minutes with him. So I showed up in Vegas tomorrow, got a flight that <laughs> And uh, I waited around for nine hours, just like wondering, like it could be any minute. They just kept telling me for nine hours, it could be any minute. And then at the end of nine hours, they were like, all right, here he comes. He's walking down the hall, be ready. And that I was so nervous for, and he was promoting his whiskey and his forged stout. So he's like, oh, take a shot, take, I'm not really a drinker either. So by the end of the interview, I was empty <laughs> stomach, nine hours of not eating anything, <laughs> really feeling it. But for me, it's it's usually the musicians. It's like the, hmm. even though they were via Zoom during the pandemic and stuff, Nikki Six and Tommy Lee, like oh, wow. I grew up on my brother telling me like Motley Crue are gods. Motley yeah. Crue, Guns N' Roses, Kiss. Like those were the big three in my brother's mind. And then, you know, in my mind because of that. So those two were so crazy because they were also so cool. My favorite band is All Time Low, pop punk band. Hmm. And yep. uh, like, through Barstool, I've gotten to meet them and become friends with them. And they were probably my favorite interview I've ever done because it was like an hour long. We broke down their album and it just felt so good afterwards. So I would say those ones. Awesome. That's so fantastic. And it's one of those things like we've talked to, like I said, we've talked to so many people on this show who are bass players and Star Wars fans. We've had conversations with other folks. Um, w. Earl Brown, who played Dan Doherty in Deadwood. He was Tanti in the Book of Boba Fett, the Weak Way bartender. And he came on to talk to us about Star Wars. But really quickly early on, something about music came up. I think Pete brought something up about music. Oh, because we had in the intro video, the um, what Charlie Benanti from Charlie Anthrax. Benanti, yeah. And so he's like, oh, yeah, I saw you in your video, Charlie. He was like, I just jammed out with him the other week. And all of a sudden, we went down this whole other side path talking about music and it just it those are those things whether it's a geeky fandom like star wars a love of wrestling whether you grew up in the 80s 90s you know now or something like music those threads that bond us together as fans of things and i think that's really cool and i think what you get to do with your show have those fun conversations with people that you admire really pulls out the fandom in that so the question for me for me to you as we are a star wars show you are a star wars fan what is it about Star Wars fandom that kind of separates itself in your eyes from other fandoms out there? You've got everything you can think of. Marvel, Lord of the Rings, Dune, you name it. Everybody has a passionate fan and a passionate following. But what for you, what separates Star Wars for you from those other fandoms? For me, and I'm sure it's the same way for a lot of people, it's the generational family nature of Star Wars. Like, I have so many people in my family that love Star Wars just as much as me. My brother named his firstborn Luke. Like, that's how much we love Star Wars yes. in my family. So it, it's that. And I'm sure other fandoms will get that along the way. You know, like Marvel didn't have 40 years worth of legacy. But, you know, I'm sure my kids, I'll pass Marvel down to, and maybe they'll think of Marvel mm -hmm. as I think of Star Wars. But I feel like for this generation and the one before the, my generation star Wars is that thing that you share with your family. And like, yeah, that's what separates it for me. Like the rest of it, like Marvel, I share with my friends, DC, I share mm -hmm. with my friends. star Wars is like, let me call up my brother. Let me call up my uncles and see what they're doing before I go see the movie without them. Yeah. How was that? Uh, were they the ones that introduced you to star Wars when you were younger? Yeah. My, my uncles introduced it to my brother. My brother's 12 years older than me. So I always looked up to him as just the coolest guy in the world, still do. And he was introduced to Star Wars in the 90s, the re-release. So that mm -hmm. opened his mind to it. He had so many toys from them passed down. Therefore, I had so many toys passed down. <laughs> and I, like my first memories, I have videos of it on Christmas, are getting like a Power of the Force R2-D2 and like a Stormtrooper. And just like, I as far back as I could remember, it was just Star Wars in my house always. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I want to ask a follow up to that question because we talk about what sets Star Wars apart. The other side of that coin is what is the common thread in Star Wars and all of these other fandoms? Because there is something that draws us together because a lot of Star Wars fans are Marvel and DC and Lord of the Rings. And I'll even say it's Star Trek fans like all of <laughs> these fandoms do tie together. Um, where do you see that connecting point? What is the thing you think that brings these different things in alignment with each other 
I, I don't know because I feel like it's probably changed over the years. Like, okay, in, in my life, being a nerd is like kind of cool, and right. I don't think it's always been that way. So I think right. like originally a lot of people probably bonded over like this is this cool little thing, and then it became you know immediately kind of mainstream. So I I don't know what it is. That that's a good question. I don't I don't know how to answer it though. Yeah, it's interesting too because like you said, I can I can vouch for the fact. Yeah. It was not cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be a Star Wars fan in 1978, 79. Uh, you know, we would hang out on the playground and play Star Wars over in the corner while everybody else was playing whatever sport. But uh yeah, it, it is interesting because the fandoms that that exist now, we do live in a completely different world where you know, between Disney Plus and Max and Netflix, like it they're all driven by these nerdy, geeky franchises so uh which so some of the tell us a little bit about the uh my mom's basement show because uh it's it covers all the different fandoms it, it covers a lot of different stuff and that's kind of like when i originally thought of it i was like i just want it to be like somewhere i can interview you know all of my heroes basically like somewhere to put interviews and somewhere where i could put all different kinds of interviews mm -hmm. so i kind of said straight from the jump like you might not listen to every episode. It might not be a weekly thing like that, but there's going to be something for everybody. There's, there's going to be music interviews. There's going to be actor interviews. There's going to be wrestling talk, MMA talk. Sometimes we've kind of off shot the MMA stuff onto its own podcast. Now it's called spin and back fist, but my mom's basement has become just like this nerd hub. So every week we're talking, you know, nerd news, we're recapping right now. We're going back through all the X-Men movies in the lead up to Deadpool and kind of looking back at the, the best and worst of them. Um, but it, it's a really fun show. It's me and my, my friend Clem from Barstool and we break down all of it and we try to stay positive for most of it. Sometimes, yeah. you know, they, they make it hard, but we try. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a challenge too, right? I mean, I, I was, I just uh, did an interview with uh, Rachel Leishman, which is going to drop in our podcast feed in the next uh, week or two. Uh, but we talked about how, um, you know, if like, your show is positive. I mean, it, out of the shows that are out there, there's 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 the positive that's real, which I think is kind of where you're at and where we're at. Um, there's the the strangely over positive, and I know that's a weird thing to say. And then, of course, you have the negative. But um, I I I think it's it's a challenge. Do you find that you need to caveat things sometimes just so that you don't get beat up, or are you just like I don't give a yeah. shit? Definitely, like, because there's the crazy toxic side of the fandom, Yeah, you almost need to, like, be like, I promise, this is the, my reasoning for not liking something isn't because I have toxic reasons. Sometimes you just don't like something, and that's right. fine, but you do feel the need to be like, I promise, I'm not one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, for sure. Nick, we saw something in the chat you wanted to ask him. Yes. L Lloyd has a question that came up in the chat that we wanted to throw up for Robbie. If he can get that on the screen for us, that would be fantastic. Um, question from Robbie from Brian. He says, I've tried every decaffeinated brand on the market and all of them are terrible. So was Dave Portnoy Team Biggs or Team Porkins? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Dave likes big boys. Team Porkins, I would say nice yeah <laughs> dave, dave is uh proudly like he, he has two big boys as his uh trivia partners and they make their niche snacks and candy all the time and he is so proud of them it's un unreal <laughs> so he has to be that's important. fantastic yeah there we go i love it and thanks to brian in the chat for throwing that our way that's dave cool. is a sneaky big star wars fan too and a star wars fan that people don't realize kind of got into it with the sequels like he was okay. always kind of like into stuff. He was like, all right, Star Wars is cool. Like I'm not anti-Star Wars at all. Didn't really like the prequels. And then Force Awakens came around and, and he became a huge fan. That's, wow, yeah. that's really cool. Go ahead, Nick. Did you have another question? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so we talk about all the time, you know, we're in this golden era of Star Wars content, all those kinds of things. You know, Disney Plus, we've got new movies on the horizon that have been announced. Stuff starting to go into production. Of everything coming up, what are you most excited for? Obviously, we got an announcement of the Bad Batch coming, you know, just in a couple of weeks. We know we're going to get some skeleton crew. We're going to get Acolyte later, maybe this year. What What's on your radar? What's kind of pinging your attention? Right now, I, I think the things that are like on the forefront of my mind, the Mando movie that just got announced, 
is is mm -hmm. right up shot up the draft board because i love <laughs> mandalorian so much right. and i love john favreau and dave filoni's way of star wars storytelling and all that that on the big screen seems awesome to me also andor season two like i'm yeah, thinking about true. andor season two constantly because i thought season one was <laughs> phenomenal and if they can keep that up i know we're gonna get like k2so in season two and they're gonna do some so. time jump stuff i hope it leads into rogue one the same way rogue one leads into a new hope where we can just mm -hmm. like lead the show into the prequel into the saga um but yeah i think like those two acolyte i'm very curious about as well because of kind of the andor reasoning of like this seems way different than everything else and yeah. it works so well with andor that who knows? Ahsoka season two, obviously that getting announced and then kind of sliding that under the rug with the <laughs> Mando announcement. They're like, oh, by the way, season two is coming. The yeah. fact that they're yeah. going Mortis gods with it and getting weird. I'm, I'm excited yep. about so much that even the Ray movie. I'm a huge Daisy Ridley fan as Ray. I yeah. think she's awesome. So being able to see that continue, being able to see kind of the saga continue in a weird way. I know it's not episode 10, but it's the main character from the sequel trilogy yeah. continuing her story. I'm excited for that. Yeah, it's it's hard not to be excited about all of it, because, yeah. again, we can't imagine fans of a certain age. We can't imagine when we had to wait, you know, three years between movies, much less. <laughs> oh, we've got to wait, what, three months between the end of Ahsoka 2 and we're going to get <laughs> Bad Batch and then we're going to get another <laughs> show forever. Like, <laughs> yeah. What, is, what, is, what am I complaining about? I, I didn't know how good I had it or how good I have it now. But yeah, um, yeah, it's hard not to be excited. It, yeah. <laughs> One of the things that has been rumored uh, is a what if series, and I'm not necessarily a big fan of what if, but if you're gonna, if Robbie's going to write a what if Star Wars story, what's it going to be? I actually have this locked and loaded, ready to go. <laughs> I would love to see what if Han Solo killed Darth Vader on Cloud City. What if he didn't see those shots coming? I know it's crazy to think that with the force, he wouldn't be able to stop that mm -hmm. scene coming. What if he was turned around when the door opened? You you could explain it away in a what if, I'm sure. sure. I would just like to see how the galaxy goes forward with Han Solo as the leader of the rebellion, savior of the universe. Like that just seems weird and what if he to me. And it's not just, you know, what if this character, what if Qui-Gon lived and Obi-Wan died or something like that. That would be interesting too, but it's right there on the taking for you. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. That is never a thought that has ever crossed my mind. And that one, that one's going to fester. I'm going to be thinking about that for a couple of days. That's really good. That's great. I'm available for consulting Disney. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Get, get this man in a writer's room. We know he'll sit in a room for nine hours and wait. So I'll do it. <laughs> that's right. I'll do it. Yeah. It's there. It's there. Do a shot. Uh, there was one other question here in the chat that I wanted to hit on. Uh, it's from our friend Matt from Enid, Oklahoma, and this is related to uh, uh, the uh, the Roadhouse movie. What are your thoughts on the remake? Because it's got that that MMA connection. It's got uh, yep. Connors in it. I yep. think it looks awesome. And I know the the original is sacred to a lot of people, and a lot of people are like, "Don't remake it." And I feel like they knew that because they keep calling it like the reimagining and they're not yeah. they're being careful to not call it a remake i think it looks great though like listen i get that roadhouse is a classic but it's also not like the godfather it's like <laughs> kind of a silly <laughs> 80s classic you know right. so like remaking it with someone like jake gyllenhaal too jake gyllenhaal rarely misses he's a great actor so i feel like that would be great like i know the people yeah, matt, matt said it, like, yep. shut up you can't remake roadhouse <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a world do we live in where you can't touch Roadhouse? Hey, it was good. All the it was fun. Right. <laughs> we, could, we could do Roadhouse again. <laughs> That's right. It, it totally works. Uh, yeah. So, um, okay. Let me throw this to you. You could remake an 80s movie. You're a pop culture guy. What, what, give me a, a remade 80s movie that you're going to remake with today's actors. I know that's really putting you on the spot. You haven't had a chance to read your <laughs> script and your your treatment for it. But, you know, we do talk like there are 80s movies that are safe. Like to me, like Better Off Dead. Great freaking movie. Don't try to change that one. But it's going to happen maybe one day. Who and knows, you can't right? say Red Dawn. They've already done that. No, no. <laughs> and that was a, not, not a great idea either. <laughs> it wasn't great. That's a great question. The Warriors? <laughs> I know it's oh, yeah. 80s. Is that wow. that's 80s, right? Yeah, that's like yes. early 80s. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
I think you could you could probably redo that, but you'd have to do it right because the environment and the aura of that movie you would have to nail, obviously, because like that's the best part of it. Right. But you could probably if you cast the hell out of that movie, I bet it'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I agree completely. And I'm gonna throw out there as a possibility as well. Um maybe a little uh jewel of the Nile and romancing the Ooh. stone. Let, let's get those in a remake. Maybe get Chris Evans in that role. Oh, yeah. I, I just, Who's down for Chris you know, Evans is anything. Yeah, get get some <laughs> charisma going. I, I, that could be fun. I love those movies as a kid. So yeah. who's gonna be who's gonna be the um, the the female lead in that one? Mm. I don't know. Such a great. <laughs> Brie Larson. I don't know. Right, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Get, but, Brie, you know we. There's lots of ways to go. I, I, I'm no one. I clearly haven't been hired as a casting person anywhere. So <laughs> if I just come, guy, up, I just come up with the surefire ideas. guesses at all times. It's either Chris Pratt or Pedro Pascal at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yep. Interchangeable I was, I was, parts in some form or other. I ain't complaining. I, I, I was just saying to, in that, that interview I just mentioned with, with Rachel, like we are in a world where we, it's no longer six degrees of Kevin Bacon, it's six degrees of Pedro Pascal. Oh, like, yeah. Because I think Absolutely. he's, he's everywhere. Yeah, He's I've been rewatching special children through like post-apocalyptic worlds. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I, I've been rewatching Game of Thrones recently, and just yesterday I watched that episode. So it was a little bit, you know, a little bit of tug on the heartstring, and then I remembered, oh yeah, Pedro's everywhere else. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Robbie, this has been such a fun conversation. We can't thank you enough for hanging out with us tonight. Before we get you out of here, where can everybody find you? What do you want everybody to know that you've got coming up? Yeah, um, My Mom's Basement on wherever you could find podcasts or YouTube or Rumble, wherever you could get shows. Um, Twitter, I'm at Robbie Barstool. Instagram, I'm at that Robbie Fox. And the band that I'm in is called Pup Punk. We've got like social handles and stuff. It's Pup Punk Rocks, but we spell rocks R-A-W-X because rocks was taken already. <laughs> so we had to, you know, punkify it a little. But we, we do have, we're going to like do a little mini tour this year. So Oh, Look awesome. out for it. It's going to be fun. That's fantastic. Well, keep us in the loop on the tour. We'll make sure to post your dates and let everybody know about it. And uh, But this has been a blast, man. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We'd love to have you back sometime. Yeah, thank and, you, guys. Uh, all the best. And uh, keep listening to My Mom's Basement because it's, like, it's, like we said, it's everything. Everything. It's great. It's a lot of fun. Thanks, so. guys.